Good morning. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you for those who are watching online as well today. We will begin our worship with Lyle and Cindy sharing, I lift my hands. May it be a blessing to you as you turn your heart to the Lord in this time of worship. glad to be able to celebrate Ridge's baptism today. Welcome to family members that are here for his special day. We also want to remember to hold Tracy Ann Hill's family in prayer. She had a beautiful funeral on Monday and these flowers are from her service. That is Pammy Kratz's sister. Getting ready for an outdoor short vacation Bible school. Please do let Wendy know if your children are coming. We are holding that on August 6th and 7th, and would like to know by this Friday who is coming. Epworth is having their sweet corn sale today. It's not a meal, but it's wonderful corn that you pick up for $8 a dozen and supports their youth ministries. And then the United Methodist women are having a bake sale at the same time, a drive-up bake sale. So I'm planning on stopping by, finding a pie. Hopefully you can too. We have added um, Nancy Knutson to the prayer list. She would like us to pray for her this week because she has a special heart 
procedure done on Wednesday, and then also Mavis Stearns has been added to our prayer list. Thank you for lifting them up in prayer. And any youth that might be watching, uh, come out tonight for some fun water games and a Bible study on baptism. That starts at 7 o'clock today. I think that's all the announcements I have. I invite you to stand as you're able, and we'll share together in the call to worship. We have come to worship God, the living God. Who calls prophets and teachers to bear witness. We have come to praise God, the almighty God. Who answers the forces of hatred and hurt with the power of grace. We have come to worship God, all gracious God. Who, who chooses, chooses even you and me to receive and carry the word of life and hope. All glory to God. We will enjoy this song. Maybe remember not to sing loudly, but you can speak the words or just meditate, take in the beautiful words of this hymn, reminding us of God's presence at all times in our lives. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there. Rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell. You heard the wonder of the word. I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young. I'll be there to guide you through the night, to plead what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in And you shut your weary eyes I'll be there as I have always been With just one more surprise I was there to hear your morning cry I'll be there when you are old I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. Ooh, sorry about that. Let's greet one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. We invite Ridge's family to come on up, and others may be seated. Your brother's special day. Yay. <laughs> we are still having issues with my microphone. Sorry. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. The sponsors have the present. I present Ridge Bradley Rishmeyer. Thank you. And Zach and Jill, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, you desire to have your son baptized into Christ. Called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in God's grace and the love of God, you bring Ridge to receive the sacrament, and you are given these responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God has made, and work for justice and peace. You promise to help Ridge Bradley grow in the Christian faith and life. Sponsors, you promise to nurture Ridge Bradley in his faith as you are empowered by the Holy Spirit that he may live in the covenant of his baptism and in communion with the church. We do. People of God gathered here today and those watching at home, will you pray for and support Ridge in his new life in Christ? You may answer, we do. We do. As we come for baptism, we say yes to God and we say no to those things that take us away from God. So together, as God's people gathered today, we will profess our faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. To renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You just want to move. It's hard to wait, isn't it? The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Heather, would you hold my book for me? Okay. Thank you. Bridge, are you ready to get wet? Do you want to splash and feel the water? God gives us the gift of water. And with water and God's word, we are claimed as Christ. Welcome to his family. Ridge Bradley, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
you belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Oh, you're showing off your muscles there, too. <laughs> Can we pray for you? Gracious God, we give you thanks that by water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Lord Jesus, sustain Ridge Bradley with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. Amen. One more special blessing for you. And then you'll be ready to crawl and move, won't you? Ridge Bradley, you're a child of God. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Lindsay, would you like to light his candle? From the tall candle there. You see the bright light? Jesus' light shines in you, too. And then there's a verse. That reminds you to take up your paper book. Okay. You want to read the verse together there. I'm the light of the world. So. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Amen. We welcome you, Ridge Bradley, to the family of God. Join us in giving praise to Jesus and bearing God's creative word to all the world. Amen. Cindy and Lyle have a, a special song. Well, you can put the candle down here. Head back and I have some papers for you. us when we are baptized as sons and as daughters we share this holy claim illumined by God's flame the light shines out in darkest night that good news to proclaim the spirit will ignite our hearts to share this light, our hands to serve as Jesus would, anointed little Christ. God's blessings never cease, our good works will increase. Our lives shine on forevermore with justice and with Let us join together in the prayer of the day. Spirit of fire, your holy presence burns bright within this world. Spread your spirit throughout our communities so that our hearts may burn with love and hope. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. 
Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to other, another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another the prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. To, um, all these are activated by one of the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Our Holy Gospel today is from Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it was written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair, a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, it's fun to have some kids here today. Would you like to come up and we'll talk a little bit about how we all work together in the body of Christ? Find a spot on the steps. Find my page again in my story Bible. It's so fun that Max and Hadley have some of their cousins here today, huh? You can sit down. Glad you could be here to celebrate your little cousin Ridge today. So you are all a gift from God. I think 90% of the time your parents feel that way, right? You are a gift from God. And you have been given gifts from God too. We heard in the reading that Brian read about the Holy Spirit gives many people different gifts. And the rest of that reading is talking about how the church is like a body. So for those who are listening online, this is the story. A lot of you have this Bible at home. It's on page 470. The believers in Corinth were arguing. They thought some members of the church were more important than others. Paul knew that all of God's people are important. Kids and adults, Jews and Greeks, all believers receive the Holy Spirit. Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, The church is like a body. We all have one body, but every body has many parts. Each part of the body has its own job to do. There isn't one part that's better than the others. Suppose the foot said, I'm a foot. I'm not a hand. I can't do what the hand can do. I'm not part of the body. That doesn't make sense, right? What if the whole body was an eye? Wouldn't that be weird if that's what you look like? If your whole body was an eye? It could see well, but how would it hear or taste? God made one body with many parts. The church is the same way. We're all part of one church, and the church has many members. Teachers, worship leaders, pastors, readers, people who heal, people who help. All the members have different gifts to share, and we each need the gifts of others. If one member is hurting, 
we all hurt. If one member rejoices, we all rejoice. Together we can love and care for each other, just like the parts of the body. Together we are the body of Christ. Okay, for people watching online, this was that page with the silly, if your whole body was a hand, if your whole body was a foot. So we're going to say a prayer with our hands, and then I have a coloring sheet for you, and I think I can find some starbursts too, okay? So when we think about our gifts, sometimes we think of things we like to do, but Paul says the gifts from God always help others. So all the people can, can share this little prayer, little people and big people. So let's first cup our hands like we're going to put some water in them, okay? I'm just going to put them out in front of you. And then just take a moment with your imagination. Think of the gift that God has given to you, that God has built into you. These gifts that are from God. Hope you could think of one or two, maybe more. And then lift up your hands a bit. And then in your mind, you can say, thank you, God, for these gifts. Thank you for the ways that we can enjoy these gifts and that others benefit from the gifts. And then we can take our hands and try to give those gifts to someone else, like you're passing a ball. Nice, good. Now let's fold our hands together. Thank you, God, for giving us gifts. Help us to use them with love and with wisdom. Amen. So you can come and pick up a paper that for it to color, and I'll get out the bag of candy. Now, you are all basically one family that's going to be eating together today, right? So if you all put your hand in here, you'll be okay. Okay. Did you want to get one for your sister? Is she helping with your brother? Okay. Thank you. And I'll have some left to light for his first baptism anniversary. Well, as we transition to the regular sermon from the children's sermon, I want you to keep thinking about those gifts for a little bit. Love and action is a big part of how we live out our faith. Volunteering can be a great way to grow in our faith and learn new gifts, um, learn new skills. Consider ways um, that you could volunteer in this next month. Maybe take a morning to deliver Meals on Wheels. Maybe help with Vacation Bible School um, next Thursday or Friday night. There is a Great Plains Food Bank distribution on Wednesday. I think the volunteers have been secured for that. But be on the lookout. They need lots of volunteers for those. Be on the lookout for helping next time. Maybe designate yourself to be a small group leader uh, to pray for some friends or coworkers or even a neighborhood group that can pray together. We all have gifts to share. Beloved of my heart and God's heart, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Times of adversity can help us grow. We grow into who Christ has redeemed us to be, who the Holy Spirit is calling us to be when we are faced with challenges that require imagination, perseverance. Marit was constantly bullied in early elementary school. It was really bad. It got so bad that her parents decided to move find different jobs in a different community. And when I got to know her in their new community when she was 13 or 14 years old, I was surprised at her maturity and her compassion. Later, when I got to know other people in her grade, I learned that she was one who showed deep kindness to those who were struggling with their identity, to the, those who saw themselves as misfits. She was the one that 
welcomed them. God had given her a great gift that had been nurtured and refined in that earlier time of being brutally bullied. Michael was often ill as a child. He had many surgeries and a lot of pain. Living through those experiences, he wasn't afraid of other people's pain. He was able to understand when others seemed dismissive or hands-off. Michael became a nurse, and his patients describe him as a healer, the one they always love to see. God is planting seeds in places you didn't expect in this time of challenge and change. The people in Corinth who had become Christians experienced great challenges. They lived in a city that was morally corrupt. The congregation was very diverse. There were members who had worshipped many gods in their past, alongside people who had been Jewish leaders in their synagogue. There were slaves and free people in the community, people of every age and economic group, Paul reminds them that they have been blessed by the Holy Spirit, but they have become enthralled with certain gifts of the Holy Spirit. Some of those gifts are a bit unfamiliar to us, like speaking in tongues or discerning tongues, but others we notice in our community, wisdom, discernment of of what is from God and what's not from God, gifts of healing, Paul reminds them that they each have been given gifts from God, and they are not to build up the individual, but they are for the good of the community. All their gifts are meant to work together for the good of others. God has brought you together, and everyone is needed for the health of the body of Christ. Paul reminds them that the key indicator of the Holy Spirit is faith. If we think about that, one doesn't need to be a Christian to have a spiritual experience in excessive amount of wine or a hallucinogenic drug can give you an otherworldly mystical experience. But only those gifted with the Spirit of God can confess Jesus Christ as Lord, can trust that Jesus is our Savior and our friend the king of creation who calls us his co-workers, finding our place in the body of Christ is because of the Holy Spirit at work in us. Faith is not self-generated. It is evoked through the hearing of the gospel. I find it interesting that Paul's letter to the church in Rome includes a different list of spiritual gifts. So that makes me think that different communities are sometimes given different gifts of the Holy Spirit. In Romans, the gifts that Paul talks about are diligence and generosity, gifts of encouragement. He doesn't mention at all speaking in tongues or interpreting tongues. As we think about how our faith can be nurtured, think about those promises that Zach and Jill made today for their son. As parents bring a child to the waters of baptism, the beginning point of our life in Christ, they promise to provide their child with opportunities to experience the love of God, to come to trust that Jesus is for me. With the Holy Spirit working through parents and sponsors and grandparents and eventually the whole church community, Ridge will come to know Jesus is my friend. Jesus cares about me. Jesus wants to help me. I'm part of God's family. Christian parents do that by reading Bible stories to their child, by showing forgiveness and unconditional love. That a parent's love doesn't have to be earned. It is always there. They will bring their child to worship, that he can have a sense of what it means to be a part of the gathered community. And families that want their child to know Christ also look for opportunities to serve others. And that doesn't have to be a demanding thing. 
And it can happen almost naturally. Bringing cookies over to a neighbor, maybe having a lemonade stand to raise money for a special project. There are so many ways that we can reach out with the love of God. Preacher Mary Hinkle Shore reminds us that according to the Apostle Paul, one way to know whether we are being led by the Spirit of God is to listen for its claims about Christ. So if we are wondering if a person or a movement is coming from Christ, we want to hear what are they saying about Christ. The Holy Spirit makes Jesus known to us in the cross, in the Lord's Supper, in Christ's resurrection. And by the Holy Spirit, the church testifies that it is Christ that is Lord, not anything else, not power, not security, not self-esteem, not money. There are other gospels that compete for our attention. I hear them once in a while, and I'm sure you do too. Christian heresies that are popular in America today include the God within that Oprah Winfrey kind of preaches about, God within yourself, Joel Osteen's prosperity gospel, everything will go well for you if you do this and this. There's a gospel of nationalism that pops up in our country from time to time that it is our God-ordained destiny to spread democracy through military might. But those are all false gospels, for they communicate nothing about Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen God. Remember the gifts of your baptism. Friendship with Christ, unity with the body of Christ, a life with Christ that starts now and, be, and goes into eternity. And one of the best gifts that can also be challenging is that we are to get to know other Christians that are different from ourselves. Sometimes, I'm sure it would be easier if we all were the same, if we all thought the same, if we all had the same experiences. But God loves diversity, and God has created us all different, with different gifts, and different experiences. Maybe you wish you had different gifts. Maybe you don't think that your gifts matter very much. But God says, what you think doesn't disqualify you. God has given you these particular gifts for a particular purpose and time. It is God's choice, not yours, the gifts that you are given. A friend shared this kind of funny story. Billy Joel, gosh, I used to listen to a lot of his music. Billy Joel has this beautiful mansion, and one day Billy Joel's toilet broke, and so he called the plumber. And when the plumber arrived, he just stood in awe before Billy Joel. You are so talented. I love your music. I can't believe that I'm in your house. I can't believe it's you. And Billy had to calm the young man down and say, right now, you are the gifted one. Right now, your gifts are needed. Mine are not necessary. Let me show you where the bathroom is. Our gifts are to serve the common good. The Holy Spirit gives those gifts to build up the group. Those gifts are meant to be shared. What's one thing that you can do to build up God's people in love. Maybe at this moment you think, I don't have any extra time. I'm feeling pretty overwhelmed with life right now. So if that's you, take a day and just rest. Rest from technology, rest from a to-do list. Just rest. And then ask the Holy Spirit to fill you up again, to give you hope. And then to say, what are the gifts that God has given to you beyond even your natural abilities? Be open to the stretching, to God stretching you into new gifts, new forms of serving others. God will always show up for you so you can show up for others. Those little things, they do matter. How can you be kind to someone who's different from you? Who can you pray for? Who do you need to forgive? 
Who could use a friendly, cheerful phone call? A listening ear. Maybe you just want to be outside so you'll pick up some litter, pull some weeds. Little things all add up. What's one thing that you can do to build up God's people in love? And that love comes back to us in this body. Love is the center. Love is who God is. Love is God at work in you. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of the day is a reminder of who we are in Christ. You may enjoy the song, meditate on the words today. Jesus, we are baptized in his death, that as Christ is raised victorious, we might live a brand new life. And if we have been united in a dreadful death like this, we will all be reunited for he In the water and the witness, in the breaking of the bread, in the waiting arms of Jesus, who is risen from the dead. God has made a new beginning from the ashes of our past, in the losing and the winning. Glory be to God the Father, glory be to Christ the Son, glory to the Holy Spirit, ever three and ever one. As it was in the beginning, glory now resounds again in a song that has no end. you to stand as you're able. For those watching at home, find a posture of prayer that is different than uh, your normal posture. Confident that Christ desires to hear our prayers and joins us to Christ and the Holy Spirit, let us pray for one another, the world, and all in need. Lord God, we are a people in need of a miracle. Ours is a world riven by division and injustice. But you, Lord, have shown us a different path. Lead us on paths of love and understanding. Forgive us when we declare the differences you have created to be a curse. Teach us to cherish our differences as precious gifts. Lord, we thank you for the gift of this community, all who are gathered in body and in spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Your Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Lord, today we ask you to comfort the dying, be a refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick. We lift up to you those who are on our hearts this day.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help us to ask boldly for what is most needed as a congregation, as individuals, as a community. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this current place and time. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as we celebrate Ridge's new life in you, we are given hope. We pray for him this day, that you would strengthen him, that he may be a blessing to his family and to our congregation. And Lord, we thank you for the witness of your people in all times and places. In you, our lives are never lost. Embolden our witness of your love, and one day gather us with all your saints in light eternal. And we hold in our hearts those we miss that live with you in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for those in places of leadership and authority, direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other, to walk in ways of peace and well-being. We pray for all who are caring for those who are ill. We pray for scientists seeking to develop a vaccination for COVID-19. We pray for people to come together in this time, to be united, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So with your family, you can give a hug. With others, please wave, make a big wave of Christ's peace. If you're watching at home by yourself, text a friend, Christ's peace. Christ's love, peace be with you, God's peace. At this time, we want to acknowledge all those who share their financial gifts and their gifts of prayer and encouragement. And we are so thankful for all who are giving regularly online. If you have an offering with you today, you may place it in the offering plate on your way out. Let us join together in this prayer. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. And we continue with the communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and has opened the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth, we praise your name. that our Lord Jesus was betrayed. He gathered with his disciples. He took bread. He gave thanks to God 
He broke it, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and offered it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we do remember. Remember us and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The gifts of God for the people of God come, for all is ready, all are welcome. You may be seated. I'll go through some instructions to safely share the Lord's Supper together today. Virgil and Tammy and I will wash our hands well. We do ask you to use hand sanitizer before you take your cup. That way when you come up, you have clean hands. So when our hands touch yours, clean hands are touching clean hands. And then we have found that it's probably better for you to leave your mask on as you come up to receive the elements and then enjoy the elements drink the juice or wine eat the bread when you're back in your pew so you will receive the bread and the wine or juice in front of this rail just have the one side and then go back and enjoy them seated in your pew and then at the end of the service you can put your empty cup back there's a tray in the back of the church and then there's a tray up here as well if you have a question you can ask Brenda or Damon and they'll try to um, usher you up so that there's some space between each family group as you're coming up thank you may you be blessed by the Lord who desires to be part of us and if you're watching live right now you may enjoy your bread and wine at home and share communion with the gathered community If you're watching at a later time, you do need to say the words of institution again and have that present moment.
come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fears. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. in my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you in your faith, forgive your sins, and keep you in God's grace now and always. Amen. Kids, come on up and get an instrument as we enjoy the song, Jesus Loves Me. built up in him and abounding in thanksgiving. May the blessing of our almighty God be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. So there are a lot of extra caramel rolls, the Rishmillers say. You can pick up a caramel roll to go if you're not part of their family and, and welcome uh, little Rid. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising up, bless your name. Yeah. Wow. 